I'm getting to the age where my friends are starting to get married, which is weird. And I also feel strangely like I'm getting left behind, you know, since I haven't had a boyfriend in six years and all. That was kind of off topic. What I mean to say is that lately I found myself thinking, why are we making swan dives for this bouquet thing anyway? It's stupid and kind of demeaning. And this is why. Well, just consider that if a bride is a stickler for tradition, you'd be jumping after a bunch of herbs rather than flowers. That's right, brides carried condiments down the aisle. This sounds like a hilarious setup for a disgusting, garlicky kiss at the altar, but surprise! The origins of this practice are dark and morbid. In Europe, during outbreaks of the Black Plague, people would hold garlic and dill over their faces to keep the disease away. I wonder how they would have reacted to someone telling them that Black Plague was actually caused by invisible tiny monsters? So the Black Plague profoundly changed your Europe's socioeconomic, religious, and political life, and gave us the tradition of carrying stuff around in our hands during life-changing ceremonies. Oh, and it gave us Ring Around the Rosie, but that belongs in another episode called Interbang Ruins Your Childhood. So over time, the tradition of carrying garlic became carrying flowers, and then all sorts of symbolism sprang up around which flowers and how, etc, etc. If you ever start planning a wedding and start losing your head over this stuff, just remember it all started with carrying around condiments to not die, and you should be set. And why do we throw a bouquet anyway? Anyway, or why do guys go for the garter for that matter? And if you catch them, why do you have to dance with each other? Well, the dancing is really, really new, and I think it's just another excuse to horribly embarrass two people by forcing them to interact and become the center of attention. But the tossing the bride stuff started out as a distraction. Most bridal dresses are these pieces of white confectionery that range from the absurdly expensive to the astronomical. Everyone wants a piece of that, right? Well, not literally. Actually, literally. Getting a piece of the bride's dress was considered lucky in medieval France. This generally didn't end well for the bride. So, for protection, the French began employing a little misdirection. What I'm essentially saying is that the bouquet and garter tosses came from distracting a mob that wanted to tear the bride's clothes off. They were decoys. They weren't the only decoys. You know we have all these sayings about bridesmaids and how we pick our best and closest girlfriends to be our bridesmaids and how it's such an honor and stuff? I mean, hearts are broken over this. No, seriously, I have not completely forgiven my sister for not making me her maid of honor, and this is like six years ago. In medieval Europe, I would have been thanking my lucky stars. There are a couple of bridesmaids origin stories that I've heard of, and neither of them are that great. First of all, the whole dressing up your best friends in the most hideous colors you can think of tradition is modern. Originally, bridesmaids wore the same exact thing as the bride exactly the same thing. They were decoys, perhaps servants of the bride's family. Origin story one. Rewind to when brides carried substantial dowries with them, figuratively. So you were a really awful guy, a really awful poxy churl of a villain, and you might think of kidnapping the bride at the altar, raping her into being your wife, and then cashing out on that dowry. As an aside, you suck. But still, when you went to carry out this villainous plan, you get to the aisle and are confronted with multiple brides who look exactly the same. Which one is the actual bride and has that substantial dowry? Also, the groom started to stand at the altar as well, so there's a good chance that he, or one of his backups, aka groomsmen, is about to stick you. The other version of the story is that this was to confound evil spirits. It's the same thing with veils, because you know, evil spirits are totally fooled by cloth. Isn't bridal tradition beautiful? I don't mean to say that every tradition came from something completely horrible. Getting married in white, for example, started with Queen Victoria, who liked the implications of the purity and chastity that white symbolizes. Similarly, the poem Something Old, Something New, Something Borrowed, Something Blue, and a sixpence in her shoe was also popularized in Victorian England. And some things are just half awful. Engagement rings have been around since Rome, but they weren't the only thing a groom might give his beloved. Some scholars argue that the modern engagement ring became a sort of financial collateral of the, this dude is serious about me, he's blowing five grand on this ring variety. And the current craze for allegedly bloody diamond engagement rings originated from a De Beers marketing campaign. Specifically, the sentiment, a diamond is forever, doesn't come from some old European custom. It was written by a female copywriter in 1947. She never married. If you enjoyed this video, like below, subscribe above, or follow us on Twitter and Facebook.